Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm Mike Brightman. My company is Brightman Designs and I design homes in Denver, Colorado using SketchUp Pro and Layout. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Medique BIM Suite, which is a series of toolbars or tools that you can use to generate like very accurate assemblies. So the Medique BIM Suite comes, comes with uh, foundation tools, uh, wall tool, truss tools, even like electrical floor, some project management tools, really powerful suite of tools. There's a link in the description to grab that and also a 10% off coupon code. So uh, basically what I'm gonna show you today is how to use the Medique BIM Suite to generate a model and then use my Conduct Tools extension to very quickly generate all of the permit sets and construction documents that you need to get this project through the city. The, the project I'm using today is a garage. It's pretty simple, but it's a great teaching tool. And I'm gonna show you how I pulled this thing together using SketchUp Pro and Layout, built the whole thing out. Uh, we're gonna talk about PDF Importer from John Brock, also our placemaker to upgrade our aerial imagery. And we're gonna have plenty of time for chit chat along the way, so let's just get to it. All right, so it looks like uh, we're in good shape here. I appreciate you guys uh, giving me the heads up there. And I'm gonna pull my chat panel over here just for the time being, so I got an eye on that. So we're gonna go into uh, SketchUp Pro first and Let's see if I can get my chat panel going. And we're gonna to go to File and choose Geolocation and then Add Location, all right? So this is where you can type in an address and then click Select Region. Now, whenever I'm pulling in uh, my, my aerial imagery, I wanna make sure that I grab the entire site, including, my, um, including my, my alley and the street around it. And so I just click Import and <laughs> of course there's an error. Uh, let's see, let's, I'm going to go uh, file, geolocation, add location, select region, and let's try that one more time, and I'll just open up a different file. Okay, perfect. There we go. All right, so now we've got our aerial imagery in here, so that's really the best place to start. With any project, you know, you can always, um, you know, you can always uh, do this later on, but if you just get it handled right up front, uh, it makes life so much easier. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to the file import and let's go ahead and import our survey. All right, so this improvement survey, pretty common here. And what I'm looking at now is John Brock's uh, PDF importer. And so this allows me to crop my PDF before I import it. So I can go like this and like that. And then I can also, this is a brand new feature he just baked in here, is I can set the scale before I import. So the scale of this drawing is one inch equals 10 feet. So I'm gonna set my scale here at one inch equals 10 feet and click import PDF. Now the benefit of PDF importer is that um, the, all of the, the uh, PDF comes in as a vector. So uh, typically you would get this like on the Macs, I believe there's like a native importer where it gets it, it all comes in as roster. The advantage here is that everything is vector so I can snap to it. And it's, it's truly accurate lines. You can even go in and double check your, your scale here. So like this guy's reading 21 feet, we're in good shape. And that new feature, that is killer when you are importing several levels of a house and stacking them, it makes it so much easier to not have to do that double click in, rescale and all that. All right, so let's do this. Uh, we've got our, uh, our, our aerial, or I'm sorry, our, um, our survey pulled in, but this aerial imagery is looking real rough. So I'm gonna go to our placemaker toolbar and hit the placemaker uh, dialog, and we're gonna bring in our uh, aerial imagery from near map, and I'll just click import imagery and uh, we're gonna burn oh, 28 credits. It, I, I did the math, it's a couple bucks on that. And so I just pull this in and watch how much better this gets. I mean, if you just knock this out right from the beginning, this is where it's at, you know, for like aligning your survey on the site, you know, just pay a few dollars, a few credits to get this thing sorted out. And so now I can really see what I'm doing. Like here's my neighbor's garage. Uh, here's the court that this, in the survey. And for this project, um, I really just need to get it close because what I'm gonna do is kind of, uh, we're, we're really just working in the back of the lot 
And so that looks pretty good. But you really want to get it like dialed in first. This is something that like once you get it set up, you really don't want to go back and start tweaking it. All right. So here we go. Uh, we've got our uh, high res aerial imagery. We got our uh, survey in there. And up next, I'm going to hide my aerial imagery. Let's take a look at our tags. And so you can see that like Placemaker brought in a handful of these different tags. Also, if I look, I think my location, I probably have some of that going on. So truth be told, I really don't need the terrain. If my site is close to, um, if it's close to flat, I'm just gonna call it flat, especially for the purposes of just like a simple garage project, all right? Um, and so then all these placemaker uh, tags that were brought in, um, I'm gonna trash those. I, I really don't need anything beyond what I'm seeing here. And so I'm gonna get rid of these as well. And then here, this is kind of cool about our PDF importer, is that it, when it brings in the text, it outlines your text and puts it on a tag. So oftentimes when you're importing like a CAD file, you really don't get the text formatted like this. So this is really handy for when you're like working off of CAD plans in SketchUp. This is really what you wanna do. All right, but for me right now, I'm gonna delete that tag and we're gonna move those to untagged and we're in good shape. All right, and then as far as location, terrain and snapshot, uh, we're, we're going to clean that up. All right, so we're all good. So now I have essentially my site and then we have um, our uh, survey. Now let's, let's get rid of this for a moment. I'm going to unlock it, hide it, and then I'm going to redraw or just like trace out the, the entire lot that I'm working within. All right, and I can see that this lot is 124.9 feet by 37 feet. And if you see in the bottom right hand corner of my screen, uh, we're at, uh, we're going to type in one, oh, let's see, 124.9 feet, comma, 37 feet. And um, all right, so I was explaining that like, I like to draw in that site so that I have it locked in on axis, all right? So now what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, we're, we're going to work with our zoning code. I think that's what's up next. So let's take a look at the Denver zoning code. And if I just like scroll through here just a touch, uh, let's see what we have. Um, we have like our uh, detached accessory building form standards. And then as I go through here, uh, we can find like our uh, garage. It sounds good. All right, I'm gonna keep on rocking and we're just gonna do this. And uh, so this, this beginning part where I talk about placemaker, and I talk about um, PDF importer and building out these rules, I do have some other videos for that. So probably what I'm gonna do is just crop up, <laughs> crop this uh, rough part here uh, for when we finish the recording and then you'll be able to start from like when I kick off with the Medique tool. So anyways, at least it wasn't the any of the, the technology I'm presenting, not yet. So, okay. So uh, we're gonna build out our, our uh, setbacks here. So we're gonna knock off uh, five feet or 60 inches here. Uh, and then we're gonna draw a rectangle uh, building in the back 35%. We're gonna move up by 10 feet like that. And then I'll tap control and go up by another seven feet like that. All right, and then remember it kicks in at a 45 degree angle. So I'll use my protractor tool and then kick a 45 degree angle like that and draw a line, and then use my push-pull tool to scoot that back. All right, so now we can uh, erase all that, and then I'll clear my guides. I have a keyboard shortcut under uh, Edit, Delete Guides. Uh, edit, Delete Guides, I have Control-E. Um, all right, and so I'll, I'll bring this closer here because this is my, my microphone. And so let me see what's going on here, camera two. Yeah, so we'll just get it close. You guys get right up right up close to me and we'll just go with screen like that. All right, so now um, we got our uh, clear our guides and then I'll make this into a group and then I'm going to assign some text or some textures to this. So we'll go with our materials and I'll add a um, uh, new texture and we're going to go with HSB like that. And then I usually just kind of I'll pick like an orange for my um, for my bulk plane, like that. And then I'll delete out that bottom surface. And then uh, this guy here, I'm gonna add another material. 
And this one is going to be in a green like that, okay? And then I tap shift, click once, and that way I get it all. All right, so now we're, we're good to go there. I can unhide the rest of my model. Uh, maybe I'll like hide that site survey. And then I'm gonna go to tools, sandbox, drape. And I'm gonna drape my lot onto the site. And what that means is that now I can like group this um, and cut it and then back out of here. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna paste it in place and hide it. All right, so I'm kind of like holding on. Uh, and so now I've got like my, my precise lot that's kind of diagrammatic. I've got all of my context. And then I also have, um, you know, I'm holding on to that other imagery, all right? So we're gonna go with, um, let's see, we'll go ahead and up next, we're gonna start working with our tags. And so like, that's really what, you know, where we're at now is like, I need to get into our Condoc system and start working with our tags, all right? So we can go with, um, the Condoc system, what this does is it allows you to reprogram Condoc so that we're working with different tags in, in general and creating different drawings. So I can load a different drawing set. So you can see we have like an architect drawing set or interiors. Well, if you double click into labs, we have other uh, drawing sets. Like we have one for placemaker that makes some really cool stuff, flex tools, of course. And what we're talking about today is our architect Medik drawing set. All right, now check out what happens when I click the reset button. It adds a bunch of tags into my model. All right, so now all these tags that like are, are created by the Medik BIM suite are going to be managed by our Conduct Tools extension. So what we can start doing now is loading up, uh, we'll start tagging, uh, chipping away at this visibility and then I'll make some comments about how we have these like uh, parallel tagging systems, all right? So I'm gonna go to the Conduct Tags dialog and the advantage of Conduct Tags uh, is that you can assign multiple Conduct Tags to one entity, all right? So I'll run the uh, project setup just so we have all of our tags ready. This is gonna be one level, no basement. I'll just hit save, all right? So basically everything, any design project can be defined or explained by level, element, location, and condition. So everything here, uh, and I'm gonna turn on everything, all right? So we're gonna get it all, it's level one and it's new. All right, and I'll just hit reset. All right, so all of these guys can have multiple tags. And check it out, now uh, everything is controlled, our tags are controlled through the uh, SketchUp Tags dialog. So if I scroll down and go to, um, uh, what are we looking for, condition new, so everything is gonna be controlled by new, and it's also gonna be controlled by level one, right here, like that. So you can see that I've assigned multiple tags to one entity, and it really feels like you're assigning multiple SketchUp tags, all right? So now, what I tend to do is turn off all of my element uh, tags, all right? So I'm gonna turn all these guys off, and now I can kind of work through this thing and chip away at it, all right? So this is gonna be level one, uh, this will be a background and it's exterior. And see how it disappears? I use that as like a checkbox as I go through. All right, and then um, this guy here is going to be context. So we'll go with uh, context and that can be existing, that's fine, or well, that's new, whatever, uh, exterior. Uh, and I, actually, you know what, I would turn on context and I would make this would be site instead of exterior, like that. All right, we'll turn off our context. All right, this is our, our site survey is gonna be a background, we'll call that exterior. And then um, this is going to be our lot, which I'm gonna call that earth, like that. And that'll be site. And then this is gonna be, um, and you know what, I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn on that earth again. And this earth is actually going to be a always off, all right? So we're just gonna get rid of it because I don't wanna see that uh, high res imagery right there in my drawings. I, I'm gonna like model that, that place, all right? So we'll get rid of always off. All right, and this is going to be called earth like that. Okay, and then I can always just hit reset and that brings everything back on 
And so now I'm kind of getting ready to, uh, to, to start modeling, all right? So I'm gonna keep working here um, and we're gonna go to our, oh, let's go into our tags and turn off our context like that and then turn off our background like this and I'm gonna turn off always off, okay? So we're gonna go with always off like this. All right, so what you can start to do is uh, you can go to your scenes and you can modify the design scene, all right? So I'm gonna turn on visible tags for design. This means that every time I hit the reset button, it pings the design scene tab. So all of this stuff is very customizable. So if I go to all on, I can see everything I've got going. And then if I just hit reset, I'm kind of back to where I wanna be when it comes to designing. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, agree that this is how tags should work. It's like multiple tags assigned to one entity and it's infinitely faster than um, you know, going through the entity info dropdown. All right, so at this point, uh, let's start working with our Medik tools. Getting to the point here, man. All right, so we're gonna open up our Medik foundation and we're gonna open up, uh, we'll go with Medik wall and we're gonna do Medik slab on grade foundations and we're gonna work with our Medik wall tools and we're gonna work with our truss as well, like that. Now, I will say this, that like, you really, um, there are some settings that you really gotta have uh, dialed in to make this thing work, all right? So we're gonna open up uh, foundation settings and our wall settings and our truss settings. All right, so probably the most important is in wall, all right? So this is where you have this, uh, 2D geometry in 3D. By default, I believe that this is set to uh, no. You want it to be yes, because we wanna create like a 2D representation of our walls uh, so that we see that, uh, so that we see that in plan. And the Kondok uh, drawing set, the, the Architect Medik drawing set is using that 2D representation. So if it's not there, it won't show up. Okay, so we'll save those settings. Uh, also, on layers, you want your wall layers on, but advanced wall layers are off. All right, so we just use kind of like the simple wall layers. So I didn't want to get into like programming in all these very granular dimension or uh, tags. Uh, I, f I, I found that these were good enough. All right, so wall layers on, and then Medik Truss under layers we're gonna turn on our custom layers. I think they're turned off by default. So if you do have a fresh install, make sure that you turn those on. And under foundation, layers, custom layers on. So that those are the settings that really need to be there. And then you gotta scroll down and hit save settings. So scroll down, save settings, and then scroll down, save settings. And then we can close out of this. All right, so now, we can start to work with like uh, drawing out the footprint of our garage. So I'm gonna come off of the side of this. You know, it was a zero foot setback, but I'm gonna give it like one foot. And then we're gonna say uh, five foot off the back. So 60 inches there. And then um, we're gonna work with uh, 25 foot wide garage by 22 feet deep. So these are some dimensions that came from uh, the client. And so I didn't really have to do much design on this. All right, so now I can use my uh, Medik foundation like this. Uh, yeah, wrong one, wrong one. Uh, we wanna go with our Medik stem wall foundations. All right, so this polyline uh, stem wall is the one we want. All right, so now what I can do is just draw pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna go uh, keep it to the inside like this and like that and then hit enter and then it draws in that entire foundation, all right? Now, everything is completely configurable here. I mean, you see there's a ton of options. Um, truth be told, for me, the majority of the defaults are, are pretty good. It gets it, you know, like right where it needs to be and looks decent as far as, um, you know, designing within 
uh, you know, just kind of like a, a real foundation design. Uh, and then certainly, like, I've gotten structural drawings back and then gone and tweaked some of these settings. That's pretty interesting, too. But I find that the defaults are pretty darn good. Uh, so we can work like that. And then what's cool, too, is that you can, like, move this straight up by, like, six inches. It's not like it's locking it in place. These are, like, modeling tools. And then you have the ability to work with it. All right, so then <clears throat> I could also add a slab as a rectangle. So that's pretty straightforward, like this. Uh, we'll go over here and then add in a rectangle like that. And then, you know, we have a ton of uh, different options here. We'll say, okay, okay. And then move that down by six inches. All right. So that's the idea with the Medic foundation tools is that you have the uh, ability to, you know, add these different uh, assemblies in. And we're, we're now working with these different tags. So like if I go into um, my conduct tools tag folder and look at like uh, foundation, you know, if I turn on x-ray, all right, so if I go to x-ray, you can see that like all the, the anchor bolts and the rebars in there. So I can go to like uh, foundation concrete and get rid of that. Or I can go to like uh, foundation rebar. So everything's already tagged and, and these Medic tags are living in the Condoc tags folder. So we're going to force and control the visibility of these. Again, I can always hit reset to get back to good. All right, so this, this particular foundation, what I found was that um, the city was willing to just push it right on through if I worked with a slab on grade. And so then we'll just go like this and draw that in there. Again, all these different options, say OK, OK. And then there's our slab on grade like that. And if I go back to uh, all my, uh, you know, um, x-ray mode, you can see all that uh, extra detail put in there. And I can tell you that like modeling all that would be a nightmare. So the ability to just kind of whip this thing up uh, is very, very valuable. All right. So I can always hit reset to kind of start over. And um, now we're going to be working with our wall tool. Uh, I'll hide that for just a moment. And then uh, we'll go to Medic wall. All right. So this this tool, I can now start to draw and just kind of click around. And I tend to just, you know, start drawing and modify my settings later. All right. So being very careful that I get back here and snap to the final point. And there we go. All right. So um, this is slick, right? Uh, so the, the, uh, there is a question in our chat panel there. Do the Medic tools um, have to have the default names or can they be customized? And Absolutely, they can be customized, but you'll need to go in and modify the drawing set, which is not that difficult to do. So here's all of the tags that are associated with the, Medic, the Architect Medic drawing set. So if you were to change this layer uh, in, within Medic, uh, you know, this roof batten, you would need to then change it, the corresponding tag within Condoc in the drawing set. And of course, you can uh, then save the drawing set and call it, you know, Architect Medic, uh, you know, name it after your firm or something. And now you have your own standards baked in. And then you can email that to everyone on your team and they're all using the same standards. So that's really the idea uh, is that, you know, everything is completely customizable. Uh, but yeah, and we have plenty of tutorials on how to use that configurator tool. All right. So uh, at this point, I'm going to modify this wall. All right. So this is going to be somewhat of a, like a, you know, a party garage, really. It's going in the backyard. I, I envision this uh, being used for, um, you know, I would envision this being like, a, I don't know, a barbecues in the backyard and open these garage doors and have a bit of a shelter too. So let's, let's edit this wall assembly and let's finish it off a bit. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down and take a look at like our uh, wall, what is it, uh, wall gypsum. So we'll say yes and then click update. All right, so now that wall has jib, and then we can like scroll down and like wall cavity insulation. Well, let's turn off our jib board tag for just a moment. Um, I've been using this tag search. This is actually not bad. Wall gypsum like that. All right, so now we've turned off our, our jib board, and we're going to turn on our wall cavity insulation. I'll update that. So now this has uh, insulation and it has jib board. All right, so. 
what we can do, there's another tool. Uh, this is like the, uh, what do we call this tool? Uh, the, the copy wall, all right? So I wanna copy this wall and I'm gonna copy the um, wall gypsum and the cavity insulation like that. And then I can just go around and I can apply those properties to those different walls. All right, so you have the ability to do it like that, or of course we have, um, you know, you can save, uh, if you edit your wall assembly, you can look, make presets. And we'll do a little bit of that, I think, with our windows. All right, so there's some, some really slick ways to really uh, expedite this workflow as well through the MIDI tools. All right, so now <clears throat> um, let's go with uh, adding a garage door. All right, so uh, I'll activate the uh, add garage door. And then uh, this one's gonna be, um, we're, we're gonna make it 192. And uh, you, you need to hit update. All right, so now you can see this is like a 16 foot garage door. And then I can kind of scoot around and I, I should be able to find like a good uh, midpoint snap. So that's 12 foot six. And I'm gonna work like this to show you, you know, uh, where I kind of hit a, a little bit of a, a little bit of confusion right in the beginning. I added the garage door, but it, it didn't like actually put a garage door in there. So the reason is that now I'm gonna to go to like edit the opening and I need to go to advanced door options and say yes, and then update. And then I get to see my garage door. So when you're loading, you know, when you're adding the garage door, you can set up your, uh, you, you know, choose the advanced options on and update it and then you'll see it get installed. It was just a little confusing when I first got, got rolling with this. All right, so now uh, door type, it's raised panel. I think that works just fine. Uh, so maybe I'll just come over here and add another, uh, another door, and I'm gonna get rid of earth for now. And uh, we'll close this, we'll add a garage door. And yeah, 192 like that, update, advanced door options, yes. And so now when I snap to my midpoint, 12 foot six, then we get our garage door comes in. Now I'm gonna <coughs> edit this opening and we're gonna choose, instead of our raised panel, I'm gonna go with like a glass panel and hit update like that. So you can kind of, you know, continue to modify these. And, uh, you know, so the idea is like, if I hit reset, you know, this is the, the alleys back here. Uh, we'll go with all on like that. So you can see like the house is up front, the alley's out back. You know, if everybody's hanging out in the backyard, there's like the glass garage door. We'll just kind of dream a little bit. This isn't actually what was chosen, but uh, we're gonna add it in for this one. I'll hit reset. Clear my guides, control E. And so now I think we'll add in some, uh, and I'm gonna turn off this earth tag. Let's get it gone. And then I'm gonna update my design scene. Remember that it's now saving the tags. So every time, you know, if I wanna go look at everything, I can go all on and kind of get a sense of like what's going on. And then I just hit reset and it strips it all back down to where I want to be. All right, so let's add some windows um, on, uh, when we're looking at the house, we need to add some windows here. So I'll close this and then let's go with add a window and I'll just snap to the midpoint at 11 feet. And like I said, I tend to just add the window and then go and modify. Like that seemed to be the way that I like to work. So then I would edit this window. And so now <clears throat> I'm gonna turn on my advanced window options and we'll hit update. And then I don't want any shutters. So we're gonna go shutters, no. And we can always just, you know, I'll update it as I go. Uh, the the window is gonna be like, let's just make it 60 inches tall. And look at that, 3050 picture. Let's go with a double hung. So we'll go with uh, double hung update like that, 3050DH. Now, if I go up here, I can save this window preset and I'm gonna call it uh, BD3050DH, uh, like that. Save the window preset, all right? So now I'll close this and then when I'm adding more windows in here, you know, let's say that I want this to be at like six feet, like that, and then, um, you know, I could even just, uh, try, yeah, see, I just, I'm never in the uh, mode of loading while I'm placing, but maybe that is something I should get into. 17 feet, like this, 17 feet. There we go. All right, so now, yeah, like I said, I tend to just edit the window 
and then choose a preset and load it like that. So you can see how, um, you know, uh, in this, let's see, let's edit this opening too. So this one, I think I said 17, maybe it's 16 feet and update like that. So yeah, there we go. So now, you know, when you're building out your presets, uh, it makes it really easy to, um, it makes it really easy just to, you know, have those settings available. Uh, if you have them all baked in, uh, you'll be in good shape there. All right. Cool. All right. So no audio uh, issues uh, creeping through right now. I assume that we're all still uh, hearing me. I'm not just talking to myself over here, am I? Um, so we're in good shape there. I'm going to go uh, close this, activate now. We're going to take a look at our um, truss extension. All right. So we'll go to... Um, yeah, so uh, SketchUp Guru, do the windows show up with the opening symbol lines? Uh, definitely, yeah, so, uh, and I'm forgetting, it's, um, I believe it's window, it's wall 2D, um, you know, uh, you can see them here, and we can go like, you know, double click in, and you can see that the entity info on this guy, it's called wall symbol, all right? So that's gonna be, um, that is, that wall symbol is, uh, that's used across the board. I believe it's also used for like the actual 2D representation of the wall. But that that is like those settings that I showed you earlier on. It's really important that it's turned on because otherwise the, the 2D symbols don't show. So like remember, uh, 2D geometry in 3D, that needs to be set to yes so that there's this 2D representation in there. All right. Um, and then, yeah, definitely, I mean, I, I suppose I haven't, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> thanks, Nathaniel. I was gonna say, I, I haven't tested it on metric. I assume that, yeah, everything is rock solid. The way that, uh, the way that, um, Condoc works is if you use the template, just like what, uh, Nathaniel's saying, it's, if you use a, a metric template, our units switch over. I'm assuming that Medit does the same thing. All right. So now we're going to, uh, set up a roof here. And so we're gonna go with uh, just like a simple uh, truss. And I'll pick um, this guy here. Let's go with this one, common. And then we'll, you know, being very careful to kind of click on that point there and then scoot over here like that. And yeah, just going from uh, working with that framing and then our truss type and all that, you know, you can get, get really in the weeds here. But I found that like pretty much everything I needed was uh, you know, good to go, advanced. Uh, and then my advanced roof options were turned off. But again, this is like, this is the default settings. So I think it's important to see it work like this. And, you know, you can change your defaults. Like say, for instance, when I'm adding a roof, um, I could go to, you know, you know, change all these settings. Like I could pick what I want it to be by default every time. So instead of just, you know, like, always having to go in and tweak all these settings, perhaps you go into the global settings and um, you know just do it one time. But I, I didn't get too far into that because I really wanted to show like the kind of out of the box how it behaves. So I'll edit the truss assembly and uh, we're gonna show our advanced roof options. And we definitely want roof sheathing. And so you know I'll just hit update as I go like that. So now we've got our roof sheathing. Uh, we want like our roof, uh, like roof cladding. And so um, let's see, we got roof sheathing and then we'll go with roof. Sometimes I have to just kind of zoom out and look for some of this stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna keep kind of working through and picking uh, gable wall cladding. Yeah, we're gonna want that. This is kind of a good one too, watch this. When I hit update, I, I found it to be, um, you know, this, I wouldn't call it confusing. I just was like, not sure why it was doing that. And I need to get my sheathing on here as well. So I'm looking for um, roof sheathing, gable wall sheathing. Yes, update. And so now that guy's, you know, uh, showing up properly. And then I need, uh, let's see, roof cladding is what we call it, right? Roof cladding, yes update like that. And so now we're getting our shingles. And then let's kind of work out some of the soffit scenario. Uh, so if I kind of zoom in like this and look up, 
And then we can go with our soffit, um, soffit and fascia options. Let's put a fascia board update like that. And then um, soffit will say yes and update that. And then, you know, I don't want it to be that box. I want it to be more of like an angled. So we'll update that. So there you go. So now it's like that whole thing is filled in. And then if I hop inside like this, you know, again, I'm still modifying the roof assembly. So I'm going to go with ceiling gypsum, yes, and we'll update that. So now it's, you know, all, all uh, boxed in there. And then let's add some uh, ceiling gypsum. We'll do some roof battens and click update like that. Uh, I'm sorry, not roof battens, uh, insulation, yes. And I'm just going to say no and update. There we go. So now we have our insulation in there. All right. So that's how you can kind of go through here and, uh, you know, continue to tweak this roof. I'll hit reset twice and that gets me a zoom extents. And so now, you know, I've got a pretty, uh, you know, complete garage design. Let me, um, I'm going to turn everything on like this. And so you can see that like when you're in the backyard, you know, you'll be able to like look in the garage uh, over on the neighbor's side, you know, there's just a little bit of room for a fence or something to go by. And, um, and then, you know, you can see that we've got a little bit more room in our bulk plane. So, you know, maybe you consider moving that roof up by a foot uh, like that. And then I can edit these walls. I'll just hit reset. And then we can edit the wall assembly. And then I'm going to make it like 109.125 and update that. And then close. And then I'm going to sample this. And we're only going to pull the wall height like that. So now when I go around here, I can click, click, and click. All right, close that. Now, here's something that comes up too, like all these uh, anchor bolts. You know, these are, um, wish, uh, you know, <laughs> these anchor bolts um, are, are kind of in the way of the garage. And I know on the stem wall foundation, there was a way to like get rid of them, uh, but I, I didn't find that here. But one thing I will say, is that you can just um, modify any of these assemblies. So like, you know, you can kind of scoot in here and, and move that anchor bolt, uh, maybe move this one like this on the uh, green, you know, scoot it over here and perhaps erase uh, that one. And so now, you know, you're good to go. So keep in mind that like those anchor bolts, um, as long as I don't regen that wall, you know, like I, I'm good to go. So just keep that in mind that like once once it's built, you just want to like kind of uh, not regenerate it because it'll just kind of recalculate everything for you. All right. So I'll scoot this over here like that and then we can delete that one and we're good. So. All right. So now at this point, um, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, this is where we start to get into uh, working with uh, the conduct tags. Um, so. Let's do this. Let's uh, select our roof and keep in mind that like under the, the uh, Medic tags, we've got, um, you know, like roof, uh, roof clad is uh, one of the tags. All right. And then you've got like roof sheathing and then you've got, you know, all your, your insulation, your framing, all that stuff. All those little pieces are are controlled by the Medic tags. And so what we're going to do now is use the conduct tags to put kind of an overall general categorization. All right. So this is going to be level one roof exterior new. That's how quick you can tag this thing up. There's no more nested groups, you know, groups within groups within groups. Um, and then all of these level one roof exterior new are controlled by the SketchUp tags. So the roof uh, and then you've got like new and then uh you've got like location exterior um and yeah so that's the idea is that you can assign multiple tags to one entity and it's all controlled through our sketchup tags dialog so like i said before i tend to turn off all of my elements like that and so now i can go through and i can say like you know these are going to be level one walls exterior new these are going to be uh, level one foundation, call it interior new, and that's it. So, 
you can like literally like completely organize your model uh, with both of these tagging systems very quickly. All right. So now what we need to do is uh, set up some drawings. So I'm going to save this and we'll put it on my desktop temp. I'm just going to call this Denver Garage like that. And we're going to run our plan generator. All right. So this is where we would open up our conduct tools. Oh, conduct tools toolbar. And then we can go to our plan generator. So this is uh, all of these uh, plans are prefixed with MDK so that we're doing, um, you know, the Medik different plans. All right. So we got foundation, a plan detail, construction plan, and a roof plan. All right. And then I think I'll also set up a full background plan. Um, and so I, I believe, uh, I think we'll probably hit a few little uh, quirks as we're creating these drawings and we'll sort them out. All right, so create plans. And you can see that what this did is it added all these scenes to my model. All right, so like if I look at all the different scenes that were created, we've got like foundation plan, plan detail, construction plan, roof plan, and our full background plan. It also dropped in all of these different section planes. So a lot of work with just a few clicks. Let's take a look at what was created. So foundation plan light. All right, so this is where, um, let's see. Yeah, definitely, um, I believe this is all, you know, both uh, Mac and PC. All right, so this guy's gonna be level one foundation um, exterior is what we're gonna do. All right, so let's make sure that that's set up. So foundation plan light looks like this. So the light, um, the light viewport refers to the line weight. So we're gonna have all of our anchor bolts on there. And then we've got heavy, which is just gonna show our slab. And then we've got dashed, which is going to show our um, kind of the foundation scenario. Now, this is one of those hiccups I was talking about. Basically what happens is I, when I built this, I was working with a stem wall foundation. So in this particular scene, I need to turn on foundation concrete. So you can see that like, you know, you just need to know, like it doesn't replace the, the need to know how to do the scene, you know, updates and this and that. I mean, you know, out of the box, you can create a lot of drawings for sure, but it's handy to really understand. So this one's gonna show, um, yeah, froze up or, okay. Oh, is there, are, how many more uh, glitches can we hit here? Am I back? Good now, okay. All right, got my heart racing again. Um, so this, this one is um, gonna show our studs as well as our sheathing, all right? So, <clears throat> cool. All right, so that's kind of the plan detail. And then uh, here's a construction plan light. So that's gonna be the thinnest line weight. And then heavy, is gonna go underneath. And then hatch A isn't gonna do anything, but hatch B will be the exterior walls. And then we have like a roof plan, we have dashed, and then heavy, and then light. All right, so that'll show the whole lot. And then our CAD background full, uh, this is the one that shows um, essentially the full plan that's easy to export as a 2D graphic. And if I look at my tags, we really need that wall 2D. Um, or, you know, I'm sorry, uh, actually on this one, we need to get rid of the cut. And so that's, you know, like I said, this is a part of the labs, <laughs> the labs collection. So there's a few little tweaks I'm making along the way. So we're gonna update our active cut like that. And so now we have a background plan like that. All right, so this would be easy to just export as a 2D graphic and kick it out as a DWG. And this way, you can send it to your consultants and they can work off your design and you can work with that like, you know, familiar uh, 2D CAD workflow where you're sharing backgrounds. All right, so that's what we've created. I'll hit reset. That allows us to get back to this working environment. Same thing with like elevations. I just click on the side of it and we get like our CAD elevation shadows like that. And then I'll just work around uh, and you know what, this was, yeah, another tiny little glitch I found um, while I was building this. See how I named the, this shadows AA? Um, these are the scenes that are created and they get stacked. 
Let's trash this. I, I didn't mean to name elevations AA. Let's hop into our Condot Configurator and we're gonna go with um, CAD Elevation Shadows. And so CAD Section, uh, Sections, MD, CAD Elevation. All right, so this one's CAD Elevation Shadows. I, I, I made a little mistake. It should be counting, not uh, with letters, but with numbers like that, all right? So now when I go in here and, and hit my elevation, MD CAD elevation shadows, it's gonna call it elevation one. And then we'll go with elevation uh, two, like that. And three and four, bam, cool. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at what we got. So we've got our primary viewport and then we've got our shadows. Those are gonna get stacked in layout automatically. All right, the last thing we'll do is set up some sections. So activate that section tool, and then I can cut like right through the, the middle window. And let's just go with like a CAD section. All right, so that's section AA, like that. And I mean, look at all that detail. You know, you're able to, um, you know, section through all the soffit, all this stuff here, like, that's like a huge jump start on any sort of detail. All right, so I'll hit reset. And now we need to run one last section cut through here, like that, CAD section BB. All right, and then we can see that one. That's kind of cool because that's getting all our garage doors set up. Uh, so really pretty slick, right? How we can get like a model this detailed so quickly, and now it's all sliced up. And at this point now, we're gonna run the Condoc export, all right? So the Condoc export, it allows us to send all these drawings over to, um, let's see, full background, yeah. So this is gonna send everything over into layout. All right, so what we're gonna do, uh, the default scales at quarter inch. So foundation plan, uh, we're gonna leave it quarter. Plan detail, let's, let's dial it up to like three quarter inch equals a foot. Our construction plan will be quarter. Our roof plan will be eighth because we're going to use that more like a site plan. Uh, full background plan, we don't need to export that to layout. Uh, all of our elevations can be a quarter inch. And then let's say that our sections are going to be half inch like that. All right. So I'll click send to layout. Uh, okay. So, okay. So, um, so um, yeah. Our, yeah, yeah. my OBS studio keeps, um, yeah. I'm supposed to, I pay a whole lot of money for this internet, I will tell you that. So um, I guess this is just kind of par for the course when you're doing these live streams. Um, so I'm just gonna keep rolling. I got my eye on the chat panel. Um, it, it says I'm, yeah, it says I'm connected. Uh, so I'm gonna keep rolling. I'm gonna start a new document in layout and go to my templates and let's go with a 24 by 36. All right, so whenever, you know, when you install our Conduct Tools uh, extension, it automatically installs all of our uh, metric and standard title blocks. So we give you all that too. Uh, so now to get those drawings into layout, I just go to my Conduct Drawings scrapbook. So here you can see we've got like our foundation plan right there. And then I can go to the next scene. Uh, the plan detail, you're, you know, I'm not actually seeing it because it's kind of a bigger drawing. All right, but watch what happens. If I like make that viewport bigger, it's there. So uh, then I can kind of crop that down and maybe just pick like this corner. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll add a door in here uh, and we'll add some gutters to the roof. But for now, let's just get our drawings in place like that. Here's our construction plan, like that. And then here's our roof plan, like this. And then I can rotate that by 90 degrees, you know, set up like kind of a site plan on the page. And let's see. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, out of sync audio and video. I, like as long as there's audio coming through, I hope that's the case. I'm, I'm, I, I tested all this, of course, yesterday and this morning, everything was cool until we go live. But um, 
I'll keep rocking. All right, so now we've got our uh, cat elevation shadows and uh, we'll go like that. And then uh, we'll just kind of keep building these out. Uh, something that I've, I learned from doing a lot of these demos is like where you put your cursor and click and drag. And then, uh, you know, when you drop, that's like your insertion point. Um, so that's kind of handy for getting things lined up a little quicker on, on the fly. Um, all right, so let's scoot those in. We'll add one more page like that. And then I'll drag and drop our section AA like this. And then we're going to uh, go to the next page and add section BB like that. And there you go. So now we've got all these drawings in there. Um, here's, here's another tip. So like, you know, technically you could come back into SketchUp and you could kick out like, you know, section BB at a larger scale. So that, that's fine, you could do that. But you know what I tend to do is uh, I just like, you know, grab this, uh, let's see, I wanna make a, a detail of this guy, all right? So I'll crop it like that and then uh, double click in and select this. So everything that you know Condoc is automating, uh, it's you know once it's been once it runs, you you can change it, you can modify it. So I'm going to choose a different scale, like um, I'll say uh, let's say uh, one inch equals a foot. So one inch equals a foot, like that, and then I can back out of here, make this bigger, and so now I can kind of crop this down like that, like that, and maybe not so much there. So now you get like a detail, right? So, you know, then you like call it out, like, you know, we're gonna blow up this area. Um, the other thing you can do here is you can ungroup this and then uh, explode this viewport. And when I explode a viewport, it becomes a scale drawing. So now I have full control over all the line weights. You know, I can go in here and, and start tweaking things however I want. You know, set this to like a 0.5 line weight. You know, so now you really have full control and then, you know, you can save these details that you've buttoned up as scrapbooks too. So there's a lot of options for, you know, like doing the job once and then, uh, you know, benefiting from it over and over. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, about getting like our drawings aligned on the page. Whenever you see these uh, exclamation points, that just means that this viewport needs to be rendered. So you can just right click and render models on page like that. Um, and then I can go to, let's see, um, let's, let's get our um, elevations buttoned up. All right. So something you want to take a look at is our Condoc annotations scrapbook. All right. So the Condoc annotation scrapbook, the first page is a palette. So like if I want to draw like a nice heavy um, ground plane for my, for my elevations, well, our current settings for the line tool are shown in the shape style panel. And I can use the scrapbook as a palette. So when I put my cursor over here, I can sample it. And now I can draw like a nice thick, you know, five point line. All right, so now I could just take like, you know, this drawing and reposition the, the precise move grip. When I select a drawing, I can reposition the precise move grip and then snap like that. Cool. All right, so maybe I'll just like make a copy of this down here and then let's do those moves again a couple times. So I'll move this, snap, select this last one, position the precise move grip on the ground plane in my viewport and then snap it to the ground plane in layout. All right, so now maybe I wanna draw some guides, all right? So I don't wanna draw like, you know, big thick black guides. I wanna draw like, you know, these kind of thinned out red guides. So I just come over here and click. If I hold shift, I can constrain uh, on an axis. So maybe we'll go like from our midpoint over here and uh, like that. All right, so now, you know, this guy, I want it to line up. I just need to snap to the point there and then scoot it. Uh, yeah, I hear you, the, the layout move group. You gotta get used to it, man, that's it. Uh, make sure you right click in the background. I can't, what I really hate is grid snap. I turn off grid snap. You just right click and uncheck grid snap like that. And then, so this guy, I want to like line it up. So I just snap here. And then when I'm moving this, I hold shift and then it jumps over to that line. Now I can just kind of get rid of those temporary guides like that. 
and then I can stretch these viewports back up like that. All right, like that and like that. Perfect. All right, and then, you know, maybe I'll take these and like stretch them out. And then I want to like break up the middle here. So perhaps I would just say like, you know, here and here. And then, you know, if you hover, you can get those inferences again. So hover, get your inference, and then erase, erase, and then we'll stretch this viewport in. So that's kind of how I clean these up. And, you know, perhaps, you know, you, if you want to go even thicker, you could say like, you know, maybe eight like that. And so you can really dial up, uh, you know, the, the look here. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, maybe we'll go back over here to our first page of the presentation and then take a look at the next page of our scrapbook. And so this, again, these come with your conduct tools on the install. Uh, you can make a copy and we have like that auto text that counts the drawings now. That's pretty slick. Uh, so I'll just copy that's three and then this will be four like that. And then again, come over here and then you've got like one, two and three, four. So that is kind of slick that it works that way and you can renumber all these. And then over here, you can certainly go one, two, three, like that. All right, and then just a few other symbols that we've got going on. Um, you know, this, actually this is a really valuable, um, uh, this is one of our, uh, one, one of the really cool tricks for layout is uh, the dimension tool. All right, so you activate the dimension tool and then I don't wanna screw around with picking all the different shape style settings uh, and the, the text style settings and the dimension style settings. I mean, um, there's so many different settings that are associated with the dimension tool. I've already baked them all in here. So all you do is click like quarter inch and then bam, my standards are running, all right? So we'll go like that. And I like when my dimensions sit on the outside. So I'm gonna go back over here while I'm live and say, no, let's go like that, all right? And then I just need to double click on each one of these midpoints to continue my string like that, all right? So it's, it is really a fast and easy way to dimension using layout. And so if I were to you know, keep working with my dimensions, perhaps I go like you know midpoint here, 12, six. All right, well, I don't wanna dig around in my dimension style. I just wanna pick quarter inch over here and that flips it to the top and then double click and then put my overall. And so, you know, you can see that like when you know these little tricks, um, I find layout to be really a great program. I mean, uh, I, I, I've heard all the complaints, but I, I tell you the truth, I just don't have those problems. I, I know how to use, you know, it's, it's kind of a tricky program. You gotta know those little secrets in order to make it work the way you want it to. All right, so now let's let's make a point here to say that again, everything that Condoc automated, um, I'm kind of blocking the, uh, <laughs> kind of blocking the uh, annotations palette here, but um, the uh, everything that we're automating is um, just the native features of SketchUp and Layout. So once you've like moved all this stuff in here, uh, then we just go back into SketchUp and let's say that we want to like make some changes, all right? So perhaps I want to edit my truss assembly and we're going to go down and choose, um, let's go with gutters. We'll say yes and update. All right, so now we've got our gutters on here and then we have gutter options that show up. So now we can go like our downspouts, yes, choose update. And then maybe, um, and those look pretty good right there. So now you got your uh, gutters all the way around sorted out. And um, yeah, that looks good, all right? Uh, then the other thing is like, maybe I wanna add a door over here. So let's go uh, close this and then we'll add a door, right? Yeah, that, I don't know, uh, maybe like, I'm gonna call it 22 foot 11, like that. Say 22 foot 11, all right? And then I'm going to uh, close that. We're gonna edit this opening like that. And then we're gonna go with uh, advanced door options, yes, update, all right? And then that door is not gonna be solid. I want it to be full glass like that, cool. All right, so then I'm going to save this. 
and then we're going to go back into layout and take a look at my document setup which is where we work with our references and so now you know like right here this is where I added that door so I'll just hit update and then you know we should see our door pop right back in there it is all right and of course you know I got to go in and, and mess with the swing and all that I wasn't really paying close attention and there's my door uh, you know whenever I see these dimensions get detached I tend to just hit select all and then choose uh, reconnect to model so you just hit control a and then right click reconnect to model I find that 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 fixes it you know nine out of ten times they all just go back to where they should be um, so don't don't right click on each one individually um, okay yeah so maybe uh, let's see uh, if I edit my opening here I'm guessing that we have a swing <laughs> I'm, I'm forgetting uh, uh, let's try and just uh, I'm, I'm gonna oh, I can't mirror it um, oh swing type left hand let's do right hand in like that and then save uh, and this is just a heads up for Condoc users I, we created this button it's called scene update and save and what that does is it like re assigns your tags to the scenes um, just to make sure that everything's cool when you're moving it to layout um, so instead of just going save just hit scene update and save if you're using Condoc all right so now uh, we can go to document setup references we'll update that and then we'll see our door kind of hop over to the right and then you know again whenever you see that just reconnect to model and uh, let's go to the next page so over here now we got our door and we've got our gutters so you know you can really see that this is kind of like this BIM light you know in my opinion SketchUp and layout it's it's like all the best features of like 3d to 2d uh, without all the the extra BIM information although you know that's essentially what what the Medique tools are doing it's just like insanely accurate modeling um, or detailed modeling so I find this to be the best of both worlds especially for for me because um, I tend to make you know permit sets and I'm not agonizing over like digging on the details so all right so uh, one other comment is like you know this this dot screen doesn't look so hot right now that's because our rendering settings are set to low so I'm just gonna go medium and uh, look like that and then render models on page all right so you can see like when you check it at like hundred percent we're good to go all right oh uh, yeah auto dimensioning from layout would be pretty slick wouldn't it that's possible I mean other programs have done that um, all right so that gets us to a point where um, I think we're in good shape you know we, we went through we, we uh, made some edits we've updated um, I'll do this I'm gonna open this final file here and uh, in the live stream folder and we've got um, the final Denver detached garage so I can tell you that um, this this set is available in the the description uh, for the um, uh, for the the live stream so uh, there's all the links that you would possibly need are are in the description including links to this final set and also the final model and all the different plugins I've been using so you can you know click through here uh, see how I set this up you know this is the set that was permitted by Denver and uh, so anyway that's uh, everything I got for you today um, yeah uh, Nathaniel is back uh, if you guys have any questions I'm gonna hang for another say 10 minutes uh, and just say I don't know I guess I'll watch the recording and just see how how uh, choppy this actually was and uh, retool my settings maybe I'll do a, a you know record this again and post it pull this one down this was kind of a nightmare but anyways I appreciate you guys being here for sure and uh, so let me know if you have any questions uh, I'm gonna hang for 10 minutes and then we'll see what happens here thanks Ron I appreciate it yeah you guys are definitely patient and and uh, cheer me on it's uh, very much appreciated so Awesome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, so yeah, share a workflow on uh, stacking viewports and layout. I mean, um, you know, essentially, I mean, that is what Conduct Tools is doing. I can show you like, you know, how, you know, what that looks like. So for instance, when we create like this uh, construction plan, you've got like a light, heavy, hatch A and hatch B. And then these guys stack uh, from left to right goes top to bottom. So this is going to be on top and then it, it goes down to the bottom. And so that's what, you know, the configurator tool is all about is that you can like set up all the scenes that you need uh, to be compiled into one full drawing. So that's, you know, that's how I stack viewports now, um, of course, using conduct tools. Uh, in layout though, I mean, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's really all about uh, just manually, you know, <laughs> right click, copy, paste, right back in place. Um, yeah, just, so let's see. Yeah, so that's the idea is, um, you know, we're just automating that stacking. Uh, in my book, I did explain, you know, this is how you, you stack these viewports. And that was kind of the idea is like, um, you know, showing you how to do it manually. But like, once you get this stuff sorted out, uh, it's really hard to go back. So let's see. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, configuration. Yeah, totally. So um, I will say that at conductools.com, um, let's see, conduct, if I log in, um, I'll show you guys what the uh, I'll show you what the uh, learn page looks like. And so, all right, and then we'll go to learn. So over here, we do have our Conduct Quick Start course, and then here we have our customized Conduct tools with the configurator. So this is a great course to just kind of get through and uh, work out, you know, all the different, this is how you use it. We build like a very simple drawing set um, but the truth is, I, you know, I like to work with you guys on it. So, um, uh, you know, hop on our forum. I mean, um, you know, I do my best to be active on that forum and, uh, you know, listen up to, to what's going on. And, um, John, I, I owe you, I know you were on here at one point. I, I owe you a response on that, but, um, yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm keen to help everyone, uh, make it work right. You know, so let me know on the forum, like if there's some product you're trying to, uh, automate and you know if you're using some other plugin that creates some other uh, tags let me know so um, let's see so we've got another question um, let me make sure I'm not missing um, yeah I need I do need a tech assistant don't I that would be handy to have a producer here <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully that answered our question about the configuration manager. Um, how do we get tags from a D? All right, so just to be clear, when you install Conduct 5.1, you, you hit that folder, and that open, that's how you open a new drawing set. In our labs folder is where you'll find that architect Medik drawing set. So that's the one I was using today. So uh, once you do that, then Conduct is all programmed to work with the Medik tools. Um, and let's see. Yeah, so Nathaniel's saying, um, yeah, in the global settings of each plugin, you can view and customize your tags. Yeah, totally. I mean, so like if you want to get into that, you certainly can. Um, you know, you, it's the far right, uh, these like, uh, you know, settings bars. So in here, you can tweak all your layers, all you want. But if you do that, just know that I baked in these tags that you're seeing, but um, if you change them, then you just need to, you know, update it in, in our Conduct Tools configurator to make it work properly. Nice, thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. We do have that seven day trial and of course 30 day money back guarantee. Uh, so, you know, that's, um, you know, I want it to work for you, not trying to sell something that's not a value. So give it a twirl, ask some questions. Uh, we even offer, you know, you can schedule like a 30 minute session uh, where I'll just kind of answer your questions. I want to get you up and running. So 
Uh, and then the fee on that plan set, it was low. I think I charged 1500 bucks for that, which I, you know, whenever I do, it, it was for a friend and it was a little project and it had a, it already had the design. So I didn't really have to think about it. All I had to do was get it permitted and I did okay. You know, I, I mean, um, I also, uh, entered into it kind of, you know, looking to learn the, the Medique tool. So. Uh, some of the hours I spent on this project, I didn't, I didn't log, but um, yeah, I think I charged like fifteen hundred bucks. It, when it comes to, uh, I, I've been asking a lot of, you know, asking around quite a bit, you know, when it comes to fees, I, I like to just talk openly about that because, um, yeah, it's it's like hard to know where you're at. Sounds like in Denver, um, like a a pretty significant pop top should be like around, you know, ten to fifteen thousand dollars. And, you know, I've tracked my hours before. And, and if I aim for like a hundred bucks an hour, that's about right. Uh, I suppose if you do it over and over and you're just churning out pretty simple designs, you know, you could be more competitive, but I, I just think it's hard to get it, you know, to really do the, the job, um, you know, with, uh, do it right <laughs> for any less than 10 grand would be challenging. So on, on a major pop top, on a, a garage, all I had to do is make the drawings and, and, you know, dance through the, the city hoops. So, um, basic inside and outside lines, not studs. Okay. So Ron, you're asking a question about like, you know, this is where like how to make your, um, like asking about how to make the, um, you know, just simple 2D lines. And that's where the, that, that setting comes in with Medique wall, uh, on the general tab. 2D geometry in 3D. All right, so that creates a 2D representation of the detailed walls. And so what you end up getting is on construction plan 01 heavy. See, we're getting just like a 2D representation of our walls. And then we have on um, the plan detail medium. This one turns on all the tags that show the 3D stuff. So that's, that's typically how I do it. Now, you know, you could also consider, I, I know there's like, um, you can like right click and choose 3D no framing, you know? So that's an option like that. And then you, you just end up with like, um, you know, let me turn on this section cut. Like, uh, so now, you know, that, that wall is just an empty wall. Uh, no framing, but I, I found that like if you're using uh, the Medic tools, the Medic BIM suite, um, it, it seems to me that it's like ideal to go 3D full framing, and then um, and, and you know typically I would use this for like new construction projects. So on a renovation, I I think it it might be a little difficult to to get it to all blend although i mean yeah it's just you know it's building walls and it's what it is but um it tends to be a lot of like you know they're going to preserve this part of the roof and build on and and perhaps i don't need this much detail and i'm not trying to you know so accurately count everything but on a new construction project i think that this is like a really powerful tool especially with all these libraries you know the doors and the windows um you know, you get so much in there. And there's so much more I don't know about this, these tools. I mean, you gotta watch uh, Nathaniel's, uh, you know, watch his his tutorials to really uh, dig in because there's a lot more features that I'm, I'm just glazing over here. So, um, cool. Yeah, and um, yeah, totally. So you could prefix all of your Medique tags and then uh, that would be easy to bake into conduct. Actually, that would be the easiest way to go. It's just if you prefix them, that would be like a cut and paste, just bam, bam, bam. I'll bet you could have that done in a couple minutes. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, the hours on the um, drawing set, I mean, I think I budgeted like 15 hours. And honestly, I, I was pulling from... A project that I had just permitted in Denver so um, you know I found that like once you get a project permitted it's really easy just to open that old set 
and and say like this is what we're gonna do and you know pulling it in um i i do you know if you check out our 3d warehouse page i know that we've got some other really nice stuff on there um let me see 3d warehouse and um so here we've got like oh there's a yeah this ivy street renovation is killer and if i go to here's a here's a link i i forget the, you know a lot of our stuff on here has um has links to the drawing sets so you know if you get if you dig in here uh also like the other one is our um adu so this guy's really slick too uh and we we link to the the drawing sets so anyways this is all like i believe it's on our conduct forum as well that's where we kind of spend, save most of that stuff. Um, let's see, with our system of auto creating scenes, are there any automations to export a 3D build video from foundation to finished? Um, you know, you, you could, uh, certainly you could. You, you could probably create a series of perspectives like, you know, add a perspective drawing um, and you could call it like, just kind of thinking off the top of my head, um, like let's say that you wanted to add a, a perspective drawing, you know, so add a perspective and we're going to call it like uh, construction animation and we're gonna number by one and then you'd add a viewport. So then you could add it, you know, I, I tend to just call it like primary if I don't know what to call it. And then, you know, probably like, uh, you know, line drawing, uh, color, that's fine. And then it would probably render as, uh, well, this isn't going to matter. We'll leave it as roster. We'll do exterior, uh, perspective, no section plane. All right. So now you need to decide which layers you want to be turned on. So you perhaps you'd start with like foundation, you know, like, okay, I want like foundation, all the foundation stuff to be turned on first. Um, you know, so, so that could be a way to, to automate that. And then, you know, and maybe this one would be called like foundation. Um, and then you'd make another one called, you know, walls. It's it, it would be a bit of a workaround, a bit of a hack, but you could totally do it where you'd like hit a button and it would set up all those scenes and then you would just need to like, you know, choose those scenes as being included in the animation and then you could export it. Um, cool. All right, you guys, I, I do, uh, I actually got to run. I got a meeting at noon. Um, I'll just say again, thank you so much. I, I'm... Uh, terribly frustrated that uh, had all those uh, tech issues. I thought I had this sorted out, but hey, haven't done this in a while and um, I'm going to keep doing it. And so uh, despite <laughs> the issues, uh, I'm going to sort it out and we're going to do it again. So I really do appreciate you guys being here today and um, certainly, um, you know, let me know if you can always respond to the emails. Uh, check out conductools.com. You can sign up for a seven day trial. Check out uh, medique.com, I believe. All the links are in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.